You're about to see my full interview with Robbie Stein, VP of product for Google Search. Robbie sat down with me right after the Google IO 2025 keynote to walk through the major changes coming to Google Search with the launch of AI mode. And this isn't a small update. AI mode, in my opinion, is the most radical redesign of Google Search since its inception. We dive into how it works, why it matters, and what it means for you as a user. So if you're curious about the future of AI, how Google plans to compete with tools like ChatGPT, or what it means when search can actually think with you, this is a conversation you won't want to miss. Let's jump in. We are here with Google's Robbie Stein. Robbie, what do you do for Google? I'm VP of product, Google Search, working across many of our product experiences, including a lot of the new AI search experiences you heard about today, yeah. AI overviews, AI mode, lens, and more. Let's start with the basics, because this isn't just another AI tool slapped on top of search. Google rebuilt the entire experience around what users actually need. AI mode is a brand new tab in Google search that gives you a full conversational AI experience, a mode where Google becomes more than just a search engine. It becomes a partner. You can type in anything, speak, upload a photo, or even point your camera at something, and Google will use the web, its knowledge graph, and a custom Gemini model to give you exactly what you need. Yeah, biggest news today by far was that we are bringing AI mode out of labs, rolling out to people in the US starting today. So you'll start to see this show up as a tab um, in the core Google search experience and within all of the Google apps as a quick way to get access to information. And how it works is you can ask anything on your mind now, type a normal question. You can take a photo, ask a question about what you see, and Google can figure it out using advanced state-of-the-art modeling and all of the understanding of the open web and uh, Google's knowledge systems across shopping, finance, sports, and everything else. But how did we get here? It turns out the path to AI mode started with something much simpler and a little known user behavior that revealed just how badly people wanted AI-powered answers. AI overviews launched last year and saw a massive shift in behavior. People wanted answers faster, richer, and more natural. Google noticed that users started adding AI to the end of their search terms to try and force AI overviews to appear. That's how hungry people were for deeper, smarter answers. I think the big, the big um, learning for us is that we started working on AI overviews, um, which was the summary um, at the top of search for questions that are pretty specific. So if you were to ask, you know, how do I get ketchup out of a couch? Mm -hmm. uh, I have two young toddlers. You're pretty pretty predictably see a little AI snippet now at the top of the page that has helpful information and links to, to dive in. And what we found was that people wanted more of that and they actually wanted more control over getting it. And they wanted to ask follow-up questions. They wanted deeper experiences based on that. In fact, people were actually adding AI to the end of their queries because they wanted to generate these little AI blurbs. Did that work? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will now because it's not that exact thing, but we basically decided that, wow, this is the, people are coming to Google with such different needs now. How, how, why can't we give an experience that you know, really lets them have full control? And for many questions where AI we think is most useful, these are typically the harder, more, more advanced, more specific questions people have in mind. You can just go right to AI mode now and use it. Um, and it does represent to us like the frontier of what Google search can do and the most advanced version of what AI in search you know, can, can do for you. What does adding AI into the search experience allow people to do now that they weren't able to do before? Like how yeah. does that really change it? Yeah, I'll give you a few examples. Um, like I had a, um, like a discoloration of some tile in my bathroom. It was getting really weird in there. Um, I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what to do with it. It was very like peculiar color. And so I took a picture of it using lens. Okay. And then I asked, what is this and how do I get rid of it basically in natural language? And then the model was an AI mode um, multimodal question with image. The model uh, did segmentation um, using lens context. It figured out what the thing was, like some mold of some kind. Mm -hmm. It explained different ways that I could clean it myself and then also found vendors in my area with phone numbers of who could professionally have it cleaned. Like that's like a, a pretty tremendous wow. leap in what's possible um, on search now. Mm -hmm. um, so those are all these really profoundly new things you can do. And that's why we really believe that in this new era, it's more, it's less about, um, it's this evolution from, you know, um, information to intelligence. Mm -hmm. And it's really about being able to ask anything. And it's like the user is actually the biggest um, constraint. Like you don't realize you can ask such hard questions. Right. Um, right. And so the, the challenge to you and everyone watching is to put really, you know, specific and hard questions into Google and see what happens. Now here's where it gets seriously impressive. AI mode doesn't 
just answer your question, it thinks through what you didn't even ask. So in other words, when you ask a question in AI mode, it doesn't just search once. It breaks your query into dozens or even hundreds of sub questions, Googles all of those, and then synthesizes everything into a complete answer. So what happens when you put a query into AI mode, first the model starts to understand the query and it makes a plan. What's this person trying to know? Mm -hmm. And what are the things I need, it needs to research in order to know more? And it will generate potentially dozens of other questions and it literally uses Google search as a tool. So it's Googling like in the background, all these questions that it thinks it needs to know about. And then each Google query is connected to the vastness of the web and Google's knowledge bases. So there's 50 billion products in the shopping yep. graph, 250 million location uh, places, places uh, information, real live time data for stocks, for weather, for finance, all available into this model. And it can reason and put attention on any piece of that information that I think is useful. So you're booking tickets to the game, it could look up weather, it could look up reports, you know, asking like what good seats are, are what, what the best seats are at that game. And it could look up number of things in order to generate this response. And then the last thing it does is it takes all that info in, it generates response, but even further, it renders the design itself mm -hmm. and outputs the you know, visualization and the all the way down to the HTML of how it shows up on the page. So if it's data, it could decide to visualize it using a charting library. Or if it's uh, products, it can make a grid and it is a, like a tray or a grid of images. So you can just browse through these like, you know, products. So it's not a predetermined template for the results. It's, it's generating the visual look as well. Many of AI. them are generated on the wow. fly. Yeah. All right, now let's bring things to the next level because this is absolutely wild. What if Google could not only understand your question, but literally see the problem you're dealing with? It can with a new feature called Search Live. You can point your phone at a problem and talk to Google in real time. The example we saw in the keynote was someone getting help with fixing their bike. But it gets even better because Google's lens tech can now segment parts of what you see in your viewfinder while answering you about what you're asking. Yeah, I think in many ways we are already there. And I think you, were, you saw the video that showed some of this Astra capabilities um, that we are bringing into search. And you know, really for what this means for most people, how to think about it is you have this kind of world knowledge um, AI that knows how to, how to research, how to use Google search, and how to access in for all the information within Google search's um, knowledge bases. That model and that, that, that knowledge base can be used in different ways. One, it can think, spend a lot of time thinking and yep. generate a really long report, or you could use that same information and just talk to it live and interact with it just like you would a phone call. And in that case, the model has slight adaptation because it knows it's live, so it'll be pithier with its response, it'll be able to be interrupted, it'll obviously have a voice response by default, but it's the same thing under the hood. And so when you see an example of someone doing a science project and they're asking, hey, what do I do between these chemicals? How do I mix this with that? It's processing that information through the camera live, taking the content from context of the user in, looking up information on the web and within its knowledge base, and then giving information back to the user all synchronously. Um, and we think, again, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an expansionary moment with AI. Mm -hmm. Like now you can ask all kinds of questions, get help with things using Google that you couldn't possibly foresee as possible even a couple years ago. Now this next one is huge for online shoppers. So basically all of us. AI mode can help you browse, buy smarter, and even make the purchase for you, becoming your new shopping sidekick. So you describe what you're looking for, a travel bag that works for rainy weather, for example, and it finds waterproof options. Not just links, but a curated panel built just for you. There's also this new try on mode. So if you wanna know how a suit or a dress will look on you, you upload a full length photo of yourself and AI mode will virtually try it on, adapting for your body type, the fabric it's made of, and the fit. I mean, it was designed with multiple body types in, um, in mind um, for this exact purpose. And I think the evolution was that there were a bunch of launches around models that you could pick that were like you. And so a lot of the technology was being created to, to fix, take a, take a 2D or a representation of yep. clothing and put it onto a person. And then the next innovation was doing it for you specifically. And really the focus is around the, the kind of just general look of it. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I think you can look for a lot more enhancements to come from that team. Robbie made it clear. The traditional search box still serves millions of quick, intent-driven lookups like checking business hours, celebrity bios, or just finding the latest news. In many cases, the classic search results page is actually more useful than an AI-generated answer. AI mode shines when you have a complex, multi-step or nuanced question. But for everything else, the old school Google, we all know, it's not going anywhere. Uh, one of Google's original mantras was follow the user. Yes. Um, how does this, what I think, and I think many people agree, is a monumental shift in search align with that mission? Well, if you think about what we're trying to do here, it's it's really a reaction to what we're seeing growing um, on search. So people want to ask questions naturally. They want to be able to communicate in ways that feel really natural to them. Um, they're used to communicating and asking questions over um, multimodality, over voice, over photos, over videos, over text. Um, and, there are, and there's an expectation that information can be fairly um, immediate. Um, and so I think if those are the principles and what we see in, in, the, in the usage and the data and when we talk to people, we're building products. And I think that's why you're seeing um, a whole product experience in AI mode and with AI, AI overviews as a, as a quick kind of preview um, becoming a huge part of what we do in search. And so it, it's, it's in that exact mentality. Mm -hmm. And then figuring out, hey, later, if this works, it can, we think advertising, we think other things can be great parts of these experiences. Um, we wouldn't start there. We start with the user. Yep, OK. Based on everything we just talked about and everything that AI mode can do, is the traditional search box irrelevant, or does that go away? Like so the search box, it's interesting. People come to search for a huge variety of things. And we don't see that changing. Okay. So like someone just wants to type in a closing business time. They want to type in a new artist. Just a single name. Mm -hmm. You heard a celebrity name, let's say. Oh yeah, they're a great actor. You just type in the person's name. In many cases, what we show in search is absolutely the best thing to show for that question. You get a visualization, you see photos of the person, you see, you get to see uh, recent posts from that person, you get to see news articles from them, you see their official website, you can look at their music. You know, I think where AI mode really um, shines is when people are looking for these really specific things. And that's where we've seen the, a lot of the growth um, just in search. Yeah. Because you can do so much more for people that that allows them to ask all these crazy questions and that product is really designed for that purpose. I think people are gonna use them in tandem and we're gonna obviously bring that into search as we can. So like, user don't have to know which of these to use. They'll just put something into Google. If there's helpful AI that can help you, you'll see it show up. And if there isn't, you'll get this visual page. You know, I don't know if you've seen, like if you search for movies, TV shows, yeah, entities, sure. places, it's like a big, rich experience. Like, mm -hmm. that's actually a great experience. If I just type a celebrity's name into AI mode and you get a single sentence description, that's not necessarily the best, um, the best experience. Yes. And so I think you realize just how much people come to Google for. Um, and, and that's why we view this as more of the frontier of search for, for, for being able to, 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 to answer some of the hardest things mm -hmm. um, versus a full-on replacement. You can find my full interview with Robbie Stein over on our Geared Up podcast channel. And if you want to try it, AI Mode is now officially live here in the US. So now, whether you're planning a weekend, solving a home repair mystery, or shopping for the perfect outfit, Search can actually think with you. No more jumping between a bunch of tabs and trying to stitch together answers from five different websites. Go try it out for yourself. Fire up the Google app or head to google.com and tap that new AI mode tab. Then come back and hit me in the comments and let me know what the first question was that you asked it that made you realize that search just leveled up. Thanks for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Webers and I will catch you in the next video.